I was traveling one day on the Prague metro and I thought, hey, wouldn't it be fun if I visit every single station? And now, almost a week later, here we are. So buckle up, grab some popcorn and get ready for a tour of the Prague metro. Before the video starts, please consider subscribing, it's free and it helps out a ton. Thanks and on to the video. First off, we're going to begin with the A-line, which leads from Nemocnice Moto to Depohostivar. We're starting off at Nemocnice Moto. This place is one of the newest stations on the Prague Metro network, being opened in 2015. As the name suggests, this station is next to Motol Hospital, one of the biggest hospitals in Prague. The building itself is filled with natural light and gives off a pleasant atmosphere. Before long, a train arrived and I was on my way to the next station, which is Petrine. Petrine is the second station in the latest Metro expansion. Unlike Nemocnice Motol, it's a single platform station, with the tracks on each side. Even though it's located quite far from the city center, due to Petrine being located on a hill, the station is very deep underground. After riding up the long escalator, I found myself in the middle of the Siedliště Petrine housing estate. There are shops, lots of coming block housing, and a tram line going through it. I'd rate Petrine a solid 7 out of 10, for a good location, modern station design, and good accessibility. After that, I headed underground again, next up Nádraží Veleslavín. Nádraží Veleslavín is a single platform station, close to the Prague airport, that's why there's so many people waiting for a train. The station is quite deep underground, with me having to take three escalators to get to the surface. There, I found a bus terminal, a tram stop and a few buildings. Overall, I like the station, it feels nice and modern, I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Next up, Bořislavka. Bořislavka is the last station of the 2015 A-Line extension. It's a single platform station, also located quite deep underground because of the hill that it's on. When I got up to the surface, I found a business district and a shopping center. There's also a tram and bus stop. After checking out the outside, I explored the shopping center. The halls are quite bright and it gives off a pleasant atmosphere. Overall, Bořislavka is quite nice, a 7 out of 10. Next up, Davidska. Davidska is quite an old station, dating back to the communist era when it was named Leninova. With its age, the design differences are apparent. For example, the station is somewhat darker than the newer ones. After getting up to the surface, I found myself at a big two-line roundabout surrounded by older buildings. Davidska is near to student dormitories due to the Czech Technical University campus being nearby and numerous important buildings like the Army General Staff Building and numerous theaters. I'll give Davidska a 7 out of 10 as well, docking points for the less modern look but adding for the better location. Up next, Hračanska. Hračanska is, again, a single platform station and one of the original stations of the A-Line. Hračanska is located in Hračany, a district near the Prague Castle. When walking up the stairs, I noticed this art on the wall that says Veškerá moc v ČSSR patří pracujícímu lidu, which means all the power in the Czechoslovak Socialist Republic belongs to the working people. A quite interesting remnant of the station's socialist history. After rising to the surface, I noticed that there's a tram line in front of it, as well as the Praha Davidsa train station. The wide road kind of spoils it for me, but the grassy tram tracks made up for it. A good 7.5 out of 10. Continuing our track down the A-line, Malostranská. Malostranská is, yet again, a single platform station located in the Malastrana district, quite close to the city center. Finally, we got off the hill that the previous stations were on, and now we're located next to the Vltava river. After getting to the surface, I saw tram tracks as well as a small park. Malastrana is home to numerous institutions, such as the Chamber of the Deputies, the Ministry of Finance, among others. Overall, a rock-solid station, 8 out of 10. Next in line, Staromjestska. Yet again, it's a single platform station. As the name implies, this station is located near the Staré Město, or Old Town. After getting out of the station, I was surrounded by beautiful older buildings. Next to the station, there is the Charles University Faculty of Philosophy, as well as the Rudolfinum, a big concert hall and art gallery. Overall, a great station with a good location, 8.5 out of 10. Next up, Mustek. Mustek is a single platform station located on the bottom of the iconic Wenceslas Square. It's the first transfer station I encountered, with the option to transfer to the B-Line. After emerging from the underground, I found myself in the middle of Wenceslas Square. I saw all the shops, casinos and other fine establishments. A tram line also cuts the square in half. 
A good station overall, 8 out of 10. Traveling North Museum. Museum is a single platform station located on the top of the Wenceslas Square. This station is unique in the fact that the exit is located on the side of the platform rather than at each end. After getting out of the earth, I get instantly greeted by the Magistrala Urban Freeway. At least there's the old architecture and the majestic National Museum building. Due to the unfortunate location in front of the freeway, I'll have to dock points, a 6 out of 10. Up next, Náměstí Míru. Náměstí Míru is a single platform station located deep under the Náměstí Míru Square. This station has the longest escalator in the European Union, and so I will not cut the escalator right, only speed it up. After completing the exhausting escalator ride, I emerged from the station and stepped out into the square. I saw the St. Ludmilla Basilica, a tram line and a lot of buildings covered in scaffolding. For the long, unique escalator, I'm giving Namiesti Miru an 8.5 out of 10. Irio Spodibrat would be the next, but the station is currently closed due to a reconstruction as of September 2023. Going through the closed station is kind of eerie, seeing the station be so lifeless and dark. After that, I arrived at Flora. Flora is a single platform station located under the Atrium Flora shopping mall in the Flora district. It's located next to the big oceanic graveyard in the middle of a residential district with a tram line running through it. Other than that, there's not much more to know about the station, a good 7 out of 10. Up next, Želivského. Želivského is, quite boringly now, a single platform station. It's located next to the Don Giovanni Hotel and the new Jewish cemetery. The station is named after Jan Jelivsky, a priest and supporter of the Hussite movement. In the Hussite spirit, the cup, the main symbol of the movement, is featured in front of the station. There is also art on the walls of the station. Other than those, there are some buildings and a bus terminal next to the station. Because of the strong theme of the station, I'll give it an 8.5 out of 10. Next up, Strašnická. Strašnická is, yet again, a single platform station located in the Strašnice district. The station is surrounded by residential development and a tram line runs in front of it. The station looks quite interesting with it looking like a big donut. Other than that, the station isn't really noteworthy. 7 out of 10. Now I get to the second to last station of the A-line, Skalka. Skalka, like Strašnická, is located in a suburb of Prague in the residential district. After getting out of the station, I emerged at a bus station. Skalka's station design is my favorite in the whole network. I like the colors, the patterns on the walls and everything. I may be a bit biased, but I'm giving Skalka a 9 out of 10. And now, the last station of the A-line, Depohostivar. First of all, the segment between Skalka and Depohostivar is the only segment available to the public where the metro train travels under the open sky. The train then arrives into the depot, which acts as the train platform. The station is unique in the fact that both tracks lead in the same direction. Overall, the station is small and uniquely located at ground level. I like the design of the station, so I'm giving it an 8 out of 10. I hope you liked the first part of my little metro adventure and stay tuned for part 2 coming next week. Bye!